On April 19th of this year, a fan responded to one of Damien Lillard's tweets with a pretty simple response. It went as follows. Dame, how's your hamstring? I just need you guys to win 42 games or I lose my house. Huge fan, even if I'm in the mansion or homeless. That was pretty simple, right? He's either homeless or he's living in a mansion or just a house. Now, whether he's telling the truth, um, we don't know. Do we trust everyone on the internet? I mean, of course. Like, why would you not trust everyone on the internet or Twitter? I mean, just reliable places. And Dame responded with a pretty simple response. He just said, say less. That was his response to this fan who needed 42 wins from the Portland Trailblazers to keep his house. And with this response, a pretty typical Dame response, and you would have thought a good Portland Trailblazers team led by one of the best players in the NBA, 42 wins, 72 game season, that seems pretty reasonable. They had a record of 32 and 24, which was pretty decent, and it meant they needed to win 10 out of their remaining 16 games to secure that 42 win spot. Very reasonable. I mean, what would you give it about a 50-50 chance for a team that had won 32 games to win 10 out of their remaining 16 games? Yeah, I'd say something like that. However, let's provide a little bit of context because like he mentioned in the tweet, Damian Lillard had been struggling with a hamstring injury and he just wasn't playing like the Damian Lillard of old. I mean, he'd been averaging 20 points on under 40% from the field and under 40% from three in the month of April. And as a result, the Trailblazers were bad. <laughs> like, they weren't just average. No, they were bad. They'd won three out of their last nine games. And you know who two of those three wins came against? The Detroit Pistons and the OKC Thunder, teams that were actively trying to lose. So the only other team that they beat was the San Antonio Spurs by one point, and that was a team that had been sliding as well. So the Trailblazers were in very, very bad form. Damian Lillard was injured and struggling, and this guy needed 10 wins out of the remaining 16 games to secure that 42-win mark. All of a sudden, that 50% chance is looking more like a 20% chance, and I think that's being quite generous. Just one final thing, in case it couldn't get any worse, I mean, those odds of 20%, maybe take them down to 10%. Yeah, you probably think I'm being dramatic for the sake of the video. No, I'm genuinely not, because look at these fixtures that they had to face over the next 16 games. I told you the record they had over the last nine games. They had been sliding, Damian Lillard was injured, and all of a sudden, they had to face the likes of Utah, Phoenix, Brooklyn, the Lakers, you name it, they faced them all. And they also had to face numerous teams that had something to play for, like the Grizzlies, the Spurs, and the Pacers. Overall, it was one of the toughest remaining fixtures in the NBA. And this is where things just get a bit ridiculous, I'm going to be honest, because stay with me, because over the next three games following that tweet, things took an interesting turn. The first of those games was against the LA Clippers. They had a lead heading into the final minute of the game. They led by five points and were predicted to have an 88% chance at winning the game. It looks like they had secured a game and a win. It looks like they were back on track. They then proceeded to score in the next three possessions while the Trailblazers proceeded to miss on the next three possessions and miss a very makeable game winner by CJ McCollum and lose by one point to the LA Clippers. That was one loss down. But have you heard of Deja Vu? Yeah, that's exactly what Portland were feeling because another very close game going down to the wire and another missed buzzer beater. This time it was Norman Powell who missed a shot and all of a sudden they had lost back-to-back -back games and things were looking tough. But this is where I think it's important to introduce another narrative because they weren't just fighting for this guy's house. <laughs> they were fighting for something a little bit bigger in terms of the Trailblazers' hopes at securing a playoff spot and not having to scrap it out for a play-in spot because following two losses and two consecutive games now against the Memphis Grizzlies coming up, the record of 32 and 26 for Portland and 29 and 28 could pretty much be cut. It would mean that if the Grizzlies were to win the next two games, them and the Blazers would pretty much be on level pegging and the Grizzlies would have the upper hand with the tiebreaker on the season. And well, <laughs> deja vu again. This one might be the worst of the three. It goes down to the wire yet again, as you know by now. And with the game only separated by one point in the final 15 seconds, the Blazers have not won, not two, 
but three opportunities to score and take the lead against the Grizzlies. And they don't just mess up one of those opportunities. They mess up all three of those opportunities. I'll just quickly take you through it. Damian Lillard has a floater that he misses. Nurkic grabs the board. He gets blocked. They then draw up a nice inbound play for Nurkic. Pretty simple play. He's got space. He's got time. All he needs to do, little reverse layup. You're seven foot. You're basically at the rim when you're going up. Surely you can't miss this. Pretty skilled center. Pretty good player. Just needs to make the little reverse layup. It's a bunny for the win, or at least to take the lead and probably win the game. He airballs it. He misses everything. The Portland Trailblazers end up missing another potential game winner three in a row all following that tweet and all of a sudden that tweet was looking cursed <laughs> like we're not going to get into that cursed stuff but that tweet was looking genuinely cursed and well the Portland Trailblazers then lost again to Memphis and all of a sudden their record was at 32 and 28 they'd lost 10 of their last 13 games Dame was still struggling and they had gone from one win behind the fourth seed Nuggets to now the seventh seed and only two games ahead of the 10th seed Golden State Warriors. The slide was real. Forget about the house at this point. The house is pretty much done. Like, we're talking about a team that had slid in as far as any team in the NBA over the last 15 games. Their best player, by a long shot, was injured, and they had just lost three very close games, including two incredibly important games to the Memphis Grizzlies back to back. It looks like their season was practically shot and you're expecting them to win 10 of their next 12 games, including five of those games against top teams in the NBA. This isn't for dramatic purposes, like this isn't going to happen. This just shouldn't happen. However, they get back on track. They win four consecutive games like they needed to. They win against Indiana, they win against Memphis, and then a couple of tougher games against Brooklyn and Boston getting helped out by Brooklyn a little bit with them missing a couple of their players. But nonetheless, the Trailblazers do what they need to do. And all of a sudden, it's a chance again. It's a chance again. And more importantly, all of a sudden, Damian Lillard is starting to play well again. However, they fall short in another game following that full win streak to the Atlanta Hawks, which leaves them with very, very, very little room for error. Only one loss allowed over the remaining six games of the season, and they take care of Cleveland, as you'd expect. We don't even need to talk about that game. It's the Cavaliers, and then they have a big, big test against the Lakers, and again, this is more than just the mansion on the line. This is a huge game in the context of the season. They both had a record of 37 and 29. This was the difference between the tiebreaker. If the Blazers were to lose this game against the Lakers, there was pretty much no chance of them finishing above the Lakers, which was pretty important because they were most likely going to end up with the seventh seed and face the playing game. However, Damian Lillard does what Damian Lillard does because he dropped 38 points and seven assists on just 18 shots. Incredibly efficient, incredibly great game against the LA Lakers. And all of a sudden, their hopes of securing that playoff spot have taken a huge boost and their hopes of uh, keeping old mate's house are still alive somehow. The next two games are pretty self-explanatory. They beat San Antonio and Houston, and then it came down to this. All of this worrying about whether this random guy from Twitter, who we don't even know if he was lying or not, would lose his house if the Blazers were to fall one win short, or if they were to make that 42 win mark. It came down to this final stretch of three games against the three top seeds in the West. You really couldn't have scripted this better. You could not have scripted this better. And again, I'm going to bring it back to the other narrative, but on the other side, the Lakers were charging again, and they had an easy run of fixtures. So if Portland were to slip up and lose two of these next three games, the Lakers would most likely be taking that sixth seed, and Portland would be relegated back to the seventh seed. So there was a lot on the line in these last few games for a number of different people and for a number of different reasons. And the first stop was Utah, in which Portland took care of business against a Mitchell and Conley-less Jazz team. But the game against Phoenix was the real test. This was the real nail biter. This is where it could have all been put to bed. The Lakers could have gone away by, you wouldn't have been an issue. The house could have been done. Everything could have been put away with this game against Phoenix. They're missing DeAndre Aiden, but they still have Chris Paul, Devin Booker. They're one of the hottest teams in the NBA on the season. They've been fantastic all year. And it comes down to this game. And well, 
I mean, this is how it goes down the stretch, because after Devin Booker turns it over in the final 10 or so seconds of the game, Robert Covington gets fouled with the Blazers leading by one point, five seconds remaining. This is an 81% free throw shooter on the year and on his career, so he's at the very least making one of these shots, at the very least, and more than likely he's making both of these shots given his free throw percentage. Now he misses both of them. He misses both of the free throws with five seconds remaining. They get the ball into Devin Booker, who gets a phantom foul, a very, very soft foul if it was even there. And the Phoenix Suns end up winning that game when they just had no chance at winning that game with Robert Covington on the line. And all of a sudden, Devin Booker sinks both free throws. And it comes down to the final game of the season. Again, the Lakers are a chance at securing the sixth seed if Portland don't win this game, which means Portland are pushed back to the seventh seed. And also, this guy's house is on the line, which is what we're talking about. And it comes down to a game against the Denver Nuggets, which unfortunately, I'm not even going to hype it up for you. It didn't live up to expectations. I mean, the Nuggets didn't really want to win. Let's be honest. The Blazers put it on them early. They had a hot start. And after that, the Nuggets were like, we're cool. We don't really want to play the Lakers as the sixth seed, which, I mean, can you really blame them? No, we don't want to play the Lakers. We'll let you take this win. But let's not take that final obstacle away from what was one of the most miraculous storylines of the season. To go from a team that was sliding, to go from a team that had some of the worst form in the league, an injured superstar, it looked pretty much certain that they weren't going to win 10 of their next 12 games to secure a 42-win season and to secure a spot ahead of the Lakers, yet they defied all the odds and they did it while playing in four games that were separated by the final shot. Four of those losses were separated by the final shot. I mean... What else do I need to say about this? This is something that I think when people look back on as time goes on, this is one of the more interesting runs of form and runs of play when you consider what was on the line as well, not just from the Trailblazers perspective, but from the mansion perspective. Anyways, that's all I've got to say. Hopefully you comprehended this video because it was kind of all a bit of a scramble, but hopefully it makes sense. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you next time. Have a great day. Bye.